So this neuron is trying to decide whether or not it wants to trigger an action potential. So what determines whether this neuron triggers an action potential or not? Well, normally inside of the neuron, the voltage is at negative 70 millivolts. However, if we can make this region of the neuron negative 55 millivolts or above, then and only then will the neuron trigger an action potential. So again, normally inside the neuron, it's at negative 70 millivolts. However, if we can make, if we can make this part of the neuron reach this threshold of negative 55 millivolts or above, then it'll trigger an action potential. So how do we do that? How do we make this part of the neuron at negative 55 millivolts or above and therefore allow it to trigger an action potential? Well, it's these other neurons. For example, maybe this neuron is sending a signal that makes this neuron more positive. So if it sends a signal that makes this neuron more positive, we're exciting it. We're exciting it because we're helping it reach this threshold, so now it can trigger an action potential. So this neuron is trying to promote this neuron from triggering an action potential. However, maybe this other neuron sends a signal that's inhibiting this neuron. Maybe this neuron is sending a signal that's making this neuron more negative. So if it's making this neuron more negative, it's inhibiting it, taking it away from this threshold and, and bringing it away from triggering an action potential. And just some, some terminology to be familiar with, if we're exciting the neuron and making it more positive to help reach threshold, we're depolarizing it. However, if we're inhibiting the neuron, making it more negative, then we're hyperpolarizing it. So exactly what's going on? Well, first, let's draw this part a little larger. So let's say this is this guy, and let's say this represents this neuron. And something important to realize is normally we have this transporter that's constantly pushing sodium outside of the cell and pushing, pota and pushing potassium inside of the cell. So because of this transporter, we're going to have a large amount of sodium outside of the cell and a large amount of potassium inside of the cell. And then we use the sodium ion gradient to create a chloride gradient. But the point is, in normal conditions, in normal conditions of this neuron, inside the neuron is at negative 70 millivolts. And then outside of the neuron, there's a lot of sodium and a lot of chloride. And inside of the neuron, there's a lot of potassium. So these are the normal conditions of most neurons. So now that we know this, how do we make this neuron? How do we make this neuron more positive to help reach the threshold so it can trigger an action potential? Well, we have these channels. So I drew the channel really small here, but we have these channels and every single channel can be characterized by the way it's regulated and they can also be characterized by what ion they're specific for. So what do I mean? Well, let's do an example. Let's say this channel is regulated by acetylcholine and let's say this channel is specific for sodium ions. So what does that mean? That means that this, this channel, whether it's opened or not, is regulated by acetylcholine. It's acetylcholine, the molecule acetylcholine that regulates whether this channel is open or not. So, so normally this channel is closed. However, this neuron releases acetylcholine. So if it releases acetylcholine, it'll bind and it'll open this channel. So that's why this channel is regulated by acetylcholine. When there's no acetylcholine, it's closed. However, when acetylcholine is released, it binds and it opens. So this channel is regulated by acetylcholine. So now that, it's, now that acetylcholine has bounded and it's open, now what? Well, we know it's specific for sodium ions. We see it's specific for sodium ions. So therefore, sodium ions will flow. But how are the sodium ions going to flow? Well, we know there's a lot of sodium outside of the cell and a little sodium inside of the cell. So due to the concentration gradient, sodium is going to want to flow inside of the cell. So therefore, these sodium ions are going to flow inside of the cell. So what happens when these positively charged sodium ions flow inside of the cell? It's going to make the cell more positive. As these positive sodium ions enter the neuron, it's going to make the neuron more positive. So if it makes the neuron more positive, it's going to depolarize it, and it's going to make it more positive, helping it reach this threshold of negative 55 millivolts, and it's going to help it trigger an action potential. So this potential that's developed is referred to as a, a postsynaptic potential. So if we're making the, the potential, because we know normally inside of the neuron is at negative 70 millivolts. That's the normal potential. However, if, if, we, if positive sodium ions enter, we're going to develop an excitatory postsynaptic potential. The, until, and so this postsynaptic potential is going to get more positive until the postsynaptic potential reaches negative 55 millivolts. Once it reaches negative 55 millivolts, then it'll trigger an action potential. So these sodium ions enter, they help the postsynaptic potential become more, more positive. Eventually, enough positive sodium ions will enter to make it positive enough to reach negative 55 millivolts, and then it'll trigger an action potential.
So again, and something important to realize, some terminology, this channel is referred to as a ligand-gated channel. It's a ligand, it's a molecule that regulates whether this channel is open or not. So now let's do another example. Let's say we have another channel, a completely different channel. And we know we can characterize all channels by the way they're regulated and with eye on their specific form. So let's say this channel is regulated by glutamate. Let's say glutamate regulates whether this channel is open or not. And let's say this channel is specific for potassium. So normally, let's say normally this channel is open. That's its normal baseline condition. So normally it's open and we know it's specific for potassium. So if it's open, how are potassium ions going to flow? Well, we see due to the concentration gradient, potassium is going to want to flow outside of the cell. So the potassium is going to flow outside of the cell. However, let's say this neuron releases glutamate. When it releases glutamate, it closes this channel. So therefore, we see this channel is regulated by glutamate. Glutamate regulates whether it's open or not. But again, normally it's open. So when it's open, potassium flows outside. However, if this neuron releases glutamate, it's going to bind and close the channel. Now that the channel's closed, now all this positive potassium is going to be stuck inside of the cell. So if all this positive charged potassium is stuck inside of the cell, the cell is going to become more positive. It's going to depolarize. So it's going to create an excitatory postsynaptic potential. And so it's going to develop an excitatory postsynaptic potential. And once the postsynaptic potential reaches negative 55 millivolts or above, then we'll trigger an action potential. And again, so this is another ligand-gated channel. This channel is, get, is, is regulated by ligands. For example, gl glutamate, which is a ligand. So, so again, so, so that's an example. So now let's do another example. Let's say we have a different neuron, an inhibitory neuron. So again, and let's say, let's say it reacts with this channel. So let's say we know all channels we can characterize by what, what regulates whether they're open or not and the ion they're specific for. So let's say this channel is regulated by GABA, and let's say this channel is specific for chloride ions. So let's say normally this channel is closed. However, let's say this neuron, let's say it releases GABA. Well, when it releases GABA, the GABA binds and then the GABA opens this channel. So we see this channel is regulated by GABA. This GABA regulates whether it's open or not. But let's say we release GABA and it opens this channel. Now what? Well, we know this channel is specific for chloride ions. So now we know chloride ions are going to flow. And we know due to the chloride ion concentration gradient, chloride ions are going to flow inside of the cell. So what happens when these negatively charged chloride ions flow inside of the cell? Inside of the cell is going to become more negative. We're going to develop an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. The potential is going to get in, we're going to develop this inhibitory negative postsynaptic potential. And we're going to hyperpolarize the cell. These negatively charged chloride ions are going to enter. So inside of the cell is going to get hyperpolarized. It's going to become more negative and we're inhibiting it. We're taking it away from this threshold. So therefore we're inhibiting this neuron from triggering an action potential. So again, the point is, some neurons send signals that make the neuron more positive. So if it makes the neuron more positive, we're exciting it, helping it reach threshold and action potential. But other neurons can send signals that make the neuron more negative, which will hyperpolarize the neuron and, and take it away from this threshold and inhibiting the neuron from triggering an action potential. However, let's say, let's say that this neuron is dominating. It's sending a very strong positive signal. Maybe it's releasing a lot of acetylcholine. Maybe a ton of acetylcholine is being released. Then we're going to strongly excite this neuron. So if we strongly excite this neuron, we're going to strongly depolarize it. And if we depolarize it strong enough to reach threshold, to reach negative 55 millivolts, then we'll trigger an action potential. But why? Why, when this region of the neuron reaches negative 55 millivolts, it triggers an action potential? Why? What's going on? Well, at this part of the neuron, we have a very interesting channel. So, so again, we, we have this channel. We know all channels we can characterize by the way they're regulated and what ion they're specific for. So let's say this channel is regulated by voltage. It's a voltage-gated channel. Voltage regulates whether this channel is open or not. So, so, so what do I mean? Well, again, we know normally inside the neuron is at negative 70 millivolts. We, we, we know that. However... Let's say we create a positive signal and we make it more positive. And let's say we make it positive enough to reach negative 55 millivolts. Once we reach negative 55 millivolts, then the channel opens. So that's interesting. It's the voltage that determines whether the channel is open. So normally, 
it's negative 70 millivolts, so normally the channel is closed. However, if we send a strong positive signal and we make it more positive, if we can make it positive enough to negative 55 millivolts, then the channel opens. So this channel senses the voltage. But once we, once we get to negative 55 millivolts, then these channels open. And what happens, because again, they're regulated by voltage. So what happens once they open? Well, they're specific for sodium ions. And we see due to the sodium ion concentration gradient, sodium ions will enter inside of the cell. So once these channels open and sodium ions enter inside of the cell, then we, we essentially uh, stimulate a chain reaction that allows an action potential to occur. And if you're interested in those details, I have a link of that video below. But the point is, this neuron is trying to decide whether it wants to trigger an action potential or not. So we know normally inside the neuron is that it's at negative 70 millivolts. However, if we can send enough positive signals to make it po positive enough to negative 55 millivolts, then these channels open, and then sodium ions enter, then we can trigger an action potential. And again, the link below will explain exactly what happens once the sodium ions enter and why it triggers an action potential. But some key takeaways from this video is that there are essentially three different types of channels. There are channels that are regulated by ligands. For example, molecules like glutamate or acetylcholine, which regulate whether the channel is open or not. But there are also channels that are regulated by voltage. There are voltage-gated channels. So these channels are, are regulated by the voltage. It's, they sense the voltage, and it's the voltage that determines whether they're open or not. And there are also channels, which we didn't talk about, which are mechanically gated. So it, it's physical forces that, that open, the, open the channels. So again, for so again, these ligand gated channels, they're, they're normally closed. They're, they're, it's these ligands that determine whether they're open or not. And that's why it's called a ligand gated channel because these ligands open the gate. They open this gate and they open it and, and they allow ions to flow. So all channels can be characterized by, by how they're regulated, what determines whether they're open or not. And also all channels can be characterized by what ion they're specific for. So for example, maybe this channel is regulated, regulated by voltage, so it's a voltage-gated channel, and maybe it's specific for potassium ions. So it's a voltage-gated potassium channel.